All right, so I'm tired of YouTubers starting their videos saying, let's jump into it, and then they don't. So let's jump into it. I'm breaking down this video into three simple steps, varnishing, packing slash preparing for shipping and boxing up. I recently completed these three painting commissions and I'm getting ready to ship them out. If you don't know, oil takes quite a while to fully dry, which is not the best because you know it's hard to convince people to buy a painting a couple months in advance. They always say that painting should be sort of bone dry just so you don't put a varnish over it and then it doesn't dry correctly, but I found a sort of fix to that. I still very much believe in waiting six months at least for paintings to, to fully here and dry before you start shipping them out but this medium that i use this varnish is called gamvar gamvar is awesome and it also mentions on their website that gamvar can be used before six months as long as it is touch dry because something to do with you know the chemical process allows them to still dry so this is what i use i use these about a month after my paintings are done so that they're as dry as possible but then they're ready to ship so what do you need for varnishing you need a brush or some people use a foam brush i usually just go for a uh, a regular one. You need a small cup to pour and mix the varnish. You need a varnish. I recommend Gamvar. I love and trust them because, you know, their products are safer to use than other products in terms of, you know, health concerns. And I have no complaints about them. I like something in between glossy and really matte. So I mix these together. I have a, a matte one and a glossy one, but I just do a sort of 50-50 um, and mix it well before. When I put it on, it gives a nice sort of even coating. So some things to keep in mind, you probably want to do more than one coat just to make sure that it's, you know, really well coated. Number two is if you're using a brush, like mine these are prone to the hair sort of falling off and you want to make sure that there is no leftover sort of brush strands in your piece because those could be those could dry up in the varnish and you know not not be the best for your painting another thing is that a little bit goes a long way so don't go overboard on on using it you could always add more but you can't you know put it back in if you've mixed it and then you just want to pour it on there and brush it on i like to brush it in one direction and then uh during the second coat i brush it in the other um other things to keep in mind is that you should be in a well ventilated area so have like a fan nearby or a window open and make sure you could see what you're doing you know when you're putting on that second coat where you're putting on the varnish might not be as obvious so you just have to make sure that you're completely covering it and that you get it on every single part of the painting this part is super fun so you know have fun the next step is preparing it to send out um i like to use a couple things here i get some d-rings some fishing wire or some metal wire in general some canvas keys some paper to wrap around it and a little cardboard piece so first you want to start off by putting in these keys keys is essential to make sure that it's really taut and ready to send out to these people. On these canvases, there's already a little slot. You just sort of put them in there and tap them very lightly, uh, making sure that the canvas gets really nice and taut. And the next step is to basically putting wire on it. You want people to be able to just instantly hang up their piece. Uh, that's like a little service that at least I provide. And you want to start off by measuring about two thirds down from the top of the canvas on the back on the wood. And you measure that, make sure that they're even. And then you get your D-rings. They already come with screws. So you just make a little hole and start, you know, screwing in these D-rings, um, leaving them at a little bit of an angle instead of horizontal, just because when the wire falls, you don't want it to be on the side of the D-ring. And from there, once you've screwed those in, you're then ready to put in the wire. I like to put a little bit of the wire in one side and sort of make sure that I have enough space and then go to the other side and give myself a lot of slack before I cut it just so I don't cut it too short because those because that's really annoying basically when you're putting it through you just want to twist the wire is pretty strong and it'll naturally just twist around it and it'll be you know it'll hold a lot of weight so once you do that on both sides making sure that the wire doesn't go too far up so that you see it when it's hung it's ready to go and you would just hold it from one hand that's how you know it's ready all right now time for actually packing it I like to sign the back of my pieces with my signature um, I like to put the year in there and uh, my website just so if this piece gets found eventually like people know my name and my website um, I also put in a business card and a sticker pack depending on who it is like if I know someone has kids I like to just throw that in from there I have a ton of cardboard so I just cut it exactly to size and I place it on there so first I put the sheet of paper on on the table that I'm using and then I put the canvas face down really flat and then I put the cardboard that I cut perfectly to size over the back just so there is no scratching or anything that happens and to secure everything in place from there I cut up the paper to be perfect size so that it gets completely covered and I fold it on each side making the end sort of in a triangle shape like like it's a present for, for Christmas you know this doesn't really do anything to sort of protect it per se but it's just sort of adding like a gift wrap on top of the painting you know it's just that little more it makes it a little bit more durable and from there it's time for the packing packing is I don't like to buy boxes because you have to buy the perfect size and it's annoying having to you know pay a little bit extra if it's a little bit bigger and all that so I make my own and uh, I got my beautiful partner here to do this part so basically if you want to do it my way you just have an old box and you want to 
measure it to size, make sure that everything sort of fits in there, taking into account a little bit of bubble wrap space. And then once you have all those measurements, you just score it on the outside and you just fold it over, making sure not to cut it all the way through. When Once you have it all cut up, you could use some packing tape to make sure that those edges are, are really strong. And then now you have a perfect box to, to send this in and it's way cheaper than buying it at the store. Then uh, I have my paper wrap uh, piece and I put some bubble wrap around that. I like to put two layers to make sure that it's really secure. Worst case scenario is that this box gets thrown, but the bubble wrap sort of would help it not get damaged. And then from there, since you have your box and your bubble wrap, it's all ready to put in. So you just slide it in, you close it up and it's ready to ship. And yeah, thanks for watching.